Welcome to Social Media Meltdown this week with myself, Joe, and Caitlin Shelby to my right or left, depending on how you're looking at the screen. Um, we got a huge show lined up. We got this is like the billion dollar show, Caitlin. It is. It's so serious. I had to wear glasses today. Oh, I should have got glasses. Read all the fine print. <laughs> For real, there's a lot of fine print. Uh, well, what's our topic this week, Caitlin Shelby? The topic, and it goes along with my short little rant that was at the end of the last episode about Instagram going Android and how upset I was. And, uh, well, now Facebook bought Instagram. So uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to be upset? Am I not supposed to be upset? But the real, literally, the billion dollar question is is it really worth a billion dollars? Was, was Instagram worth a billion dollars? I don't know. We should discuss that in this week's social media meltdown. That's such a great idea. <laughs> let's do it right now. Let's, so, let's do this discussion. Gut, gut feeling. Instagram gut feeling is no, cause I can't fathom a billion dollars. You can, and you can, there's nine people that work there. Can they really fathom a billion dollars no i've heard like there was like 12 people that worked there i guess with a billion dollars it doesn't really matter um the ceo uh is gonna end up with like 400 million dollars yeah and he's on the board at facebook like he's on facebook's board so when they their initial public offering when that goes out this dude's gonna be so rich he's just gonna back away be an angel investor he's gonna be so rich he's gonna be so rich but the thing is there is some major consequences here to this. Uh, Facebook buys Instagram, but you can already f- share pictures on Facebook. Why would Facebook want to buy Instagram? Kate, at Caitlin Shelby on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a billion dollar question. Mainly, I think they're just they're buying them for the audience. Well, uh, Instagram I, I, is a huge audience, and and I I really honestly think that that was the easiest way for them to buy a very large audience. Um. And it also kind of says something about the app that that Facebook doesn't believe that Instagram was a fad and and it's here to stay. So they they felt like they can invest in the company. Well, Facebook has like, what was it, 800 million users or something like that? Yeah, like 840. 840 million. Instagram only has 30 million users in comparison. So it's almost a drop in a bucket to them. But the thing is, I I think what Facebook really, you know, what I know we talked a little bit earlier in the week about it. Um, I found out a couple of neat pieces of information. When you upload a picture to Facebook, you have to tell Facebook where you are when this picture was being taken place. When Mm -hmm. with Instagram, it geotags your photo. And this is very valuable to an, a marketer. Uh, you can sell your geocached information, basically, from your Instagram photo right to Facebook. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There's just like, just all of a sudden, it like all comes together. I didn't realize this when I first read the story until I started looking into it more. But I think and neither did I. Because the first thing I was thinking was, how are they gonna? They're never gonna make this money back. Yeah, and but- that this this is what I mean. That this is the dirty underbelly. Of, yeah. of what we didn't realize. We just thought it was a crazy deal. Like they wanted to scoop it up before Google or something like that. But yes. the strategy is um, they want more information on you. And uh, there's actually been kind of a revolt I've been looking at. There has. Um, I mean, according to Twitter, um, the approval rating was only 12% um, based on tweets. So, so most, so out of all the tweets that came out, only twelve percent of them were like, "All right, Instagram." Yeah. yeah. So, like general positive tweets, pro Zuckerberg mm-hmm. tweets, or people looking forward to the collaboration, those only ended up to twelve percent. You know, so, what, I mean, like when you get a uh, Twitter is the pulse of the internet. You know, like so, I, I I would say it's the vocal majority almost because a lot of people tweet about stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, w- I would say that's probably pretty accurate. Only twelve percent of the population probably only approves of uh, this whole deal. But I don't know well, if they know 52, the implications. Fifty-two percent was neutral, but I feel like most of the world is neutral, so that's about right on par with people that don't really care. Because mm-hmm. um, most, you know, don't really think it uh, anything applies to them. Which I mean, maybe this doesn't really affect our everyday lives, but for some of us, it's just really important. It is, yes. <laughs> But does and, this, does this yeah. make you feel a little bit weird that 
um, the way Facebook is structuring this takeover of Instagram because they bought them out, they're saying Instagram's going to be its own company. Everyone, don't freak out. We're not going to do anything yet. <laughs> you know, yeah. like don't worry yet. <laughs> Makes me feel a little, uh, a little bit uncomfortable. But yes. I'm not, I'm not an avid Instagram user. I don't have an iPhone. You have an i device. Device size. Yes, <laughs> you have eye device size. So, I, um, do you feel? Are you going to revolt? Are you going to go to the next big thing now that Instagram has uh, sold the farm? I mean, since this has come out, uh, there's been a huge influx in apps that you can download to export all of your Instagram photos. Um, Is there like one a, called Instagram? Because this should be. I just came up with an app name. No, but you should make it. At least I don't think so. I can't remember what the name of the one was that I was going. That I'm, I'm thinking about using. I've bookmarked it at work. Okay. It's important things I do at work. <laughs> um, but basically, it just some people are abandoning ship, and there are there are a lot of people that are very avid social media users and lovers that don't believe in Facebook. I fortunately believe in Facebook, um, although I don't use it very much. Um, I, I think it's here for the long haul, and, and by buying Instagram, it kind of validates Instagram as not a fad app, um, but as a legitimate form of communication. So uh, as much as I, I loved Instagram being a person or a private iPhone-only club, um, I understand, I guess now it's all making sense why it went Android. If it went Android and nothing like this happened, I would still be upset, but now I guess I get it. Um, and I guess it, Facebook could also piggyback off of the mobile uploading because, uh, mobile uploading on Facebook sucks. It doesn't yeah. work right. That, so. No, that's true. That's really true. The mobile, you don't, when you think of like places that instantly process your pictures, Facebook has to be part of the conversation because it's so bad because it it's is. not it's not an intuitive process and instagram really has done it right i like i said i don't own the device i've used the devices i've played around with instagram especially after the story broke it's like oh we're gotta talk about this and it's just such a slick way of interacting with stuff um but it's that i i really think it all comes down to that location-based service mm -hmm. the location-based advertising i i think that's this thing that's nobody's talking about but is a really big deal no and and everyone keeps saying you know the world is turning mobile everything must go mobile 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 and if facebook doesn't function well mobily as much as they they update their apps and they try to water down everything and it's not as intuitive as if you were using their website um they are they just offer so much and it doesn't translate well back down to the mobile level so do you think that's because there's too much information? I said that, yeah, sometimes I think there is just, they offer too much. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone uses all of that. So it's where do you draw the line with what's mobile and what's not? And then. <sighs> <laughs> that's a whole They'll different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whole other discussion. But, it, I mean, let's get back to the main topic is. Was all this really worth it? Couldn't Facebook have spent less than a billion dollars to recreate this um, this geolocating service themselves? Well, I mean, the one thing, uh, the other thing really is the brand loyalty. Uh, did, did they shatter the brand loyalty of Instagram by buying it up? Do that you, I haven't seen. Feel... Uh, well, I mean, if you look at their approval ratings, um, there was 35% was negative. Um, 10% were tweets about people deleting their Instagram accounts. Um, there was general displeasure with Instagram, which is 6%. 4% um, say that Facebook will just completely screw up the app altogether, which <laughs> with all this advertising talk, you know, that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> Facebook loves to put ads on everything, so. I, I, I don't know. I think that... Uh, the the people, I mean, the I mean, the people have spoken. Yeah, the people have spoken. The people at Instagram have to be extremely excited 
I know I would be. <laughs> Obviously, you just got a billion dollars for something you just created two years ago. Only to, yeah, it's only been. I mean, not created, but you just released it to the world two years ago. It was debuted at 2010's South by Southwest. Yes, or we'll have to. Eleven. I'm not 11. good at math. Well, it was two. It was two years ago. Today, today is in the 2012. Is so right. Not this, not this last South by Southwest, but the one before that. So like a year and a half, two years ago, this company was just making its debut, and now it's worth more than the New York Times. Like, th- does that put it in perspective with the billion? Like, yeah. It's worth more than the New York Times. Kodak has gone out of business. Yes, this is nuts. Kodak just went bankrupt. The people who invented the Polaroid picture. Wait, no, that's Polaroid. The people who invented the picture. <laughs> like, <laughs> Kodak just went out of business because they couldn't adapt. And this company that is not even based on any sort of hardware, it's only based on a idea. It's not even a tangible thing. Yeah, it's not. Thing. There's nothing that Facebook can exam- – like, it's it's not even real. I mean, no, it's real, but it's, it's it, that's the thing. It, this uh, brings up the the other thing I want to talk about. The company doesn't make any money. There yeah. is no uh, there's no structure in place to raise funds, and they just dropped a billion dollars on this company as a service mm-hmm. that they're going to integrate into Facebook to to bolster their uh, to bolster the Facebook services, but. The the company right now, as we as we know it, is not making any money. It's no, only been no ads, by angel but... investors and capital investments and things like that. Exactly. Venture capitalists and capital investments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the fancy. Like, that, and that's what I said that they're, they're not going to make their money back unless they change it. Because mm-hmm. as it stands, they just gave gave away a billion dollars. <laughs> I so. mean, does that? Do, is this a bad move by Facebook? Do you think it could, I? I think it could potentially be something that uh, that Facebook is going to look back on. Or do you think? I mean, I don't really think that. I think that no. they're going to be able to monetize uh. this and make it part of their services. But I, I think it's funny the way it was acquired. They were like, you know, we bought them for a billion dollars, but we don't want to mess around with them just yet. Yeah, in in Facebook is all about staying um, either not always staying one step ahead, but at least when someone pulls ahead, um, they make monumental strides in a matter of you know, what seems like weeks to to now be back on top or to at least make sure they have the top in technology. So like when Google Plus came out and they offered all this mumbo jumbo, and Facebook's like, oh crap, we don't offer any of that. So give them two weeks, and yep. they already had. It was it was oh, seriously yeah. two weeks. Like that's the an effective time frame. And all of a sudden they were uh, Zuckerberg was up at uh, I forget what convention. It was, it was um, GDC or no? It was some uh, mobile. F11 wasn't it? Or yeah. Anyway, it was some convention. He was just up. He's like, oh yeah, we have all this stuff too. But it's like it must have taken you more than two weeks to work on this. But I don't know if they were really working on it for more than two weeks. It's just nuts. I don't know. So is is by buying Instagram their way of just making sure they don't have to spend the time developing and rolling out and testing? They can just buy an entire company. I mean, Facebook is estimated at a hundred billion dollars. A billion dollars is like a drop in the hat. I mean, it's a little more than a drop in the hat, but you know what I mean. They, yeah, totally, totally. Is it worth saving? time for them to just write the check and they now own a perfectly working not per app. it's not perfectly working that's the thing it has a great service has a following doesn't make any money that's not perfect that's i mean it functions a, a functioning, functioning. A, a malnourished company like the thing is i i can't think off the top of my head i can't think of any competitor you know, I mean, we keep our ears to the ground on this stuff. The only competitor I think that that does this geocaching of pictures would be something like Path, where you only get 150 friends and it's supposed to be really close knit. And and that's um, that everyone's like Google by Path, and then but I mean, Path Store is whatever. You know. But that I I think that that might have been maybe sparked Facebook like okay, this is Google's next move. Now we need to, we need to move on Instagram now. Mm-hmm. Like we we need to get a company that or we need to make a service that's going to do this. I feel like Facebook would have bought in or um, Foursquare instead of 
um, investing all the time and money into developing their own Mm check-ins because it seems redundant. Why let there be two existing, the exact same concepts yeah. That are both extremely popular with an audience divided. I mean, I never check in on Facebook. However, I check in on Foursquare. So why wouldn't you take that? I mean, the majority of people still upload all of their pictures to Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's just once in a while, one of them makes its way to Instagram. Mm-hmm. But majority of people check in via Foursquare. I mean, you get the coupons, you get the perks from the companies. Why wouldn't you spend that billion dollars and take over and take, that market? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, maybe because their service was absolutely lacking in that area. Because, yeah. like, like you said before, you're like the picture uploading on Facebook, not very good, and it isn't. It really isn't. I remember yeah. re- being so excited when Facebook had the face recognition stuff. You're like, oh my gosh! It knows it was my- creepy because I like kept calling other people the wrong person. It just got messy. Well, I got like the three faces. I got like the clean shaven Joe Cariotti. I have the Joe Joe Cariotti with the glasses, and then I have like n- you know like a little gristle Joe Cariotti. <laughs> <laughs> and then then it just gets all confused. Yeah. Who is then, this? Oh, especially anyway. The it's just it's a really um. I, I I just I don't know I I don't see how they can mess it up though. Facebook no. really doesn't has has had a good track record of taking companies, um, basically sucking all the good stuff out of it, throwing away the bad stuff, and and implementing it in a way that makes sense. And even though there's always that ten percent of the population that hates it, or you know maybe in this case the Thanks. whole the, like the whole Instagram audience is probably gonna be a lot more. Uh, uh, I don't know. Apprehensive. The other thing I don't understand is that the I don't, I wish I would maybe I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. But um, at the most annoying they did like a a research of what people think is the most annoying thing to see on their on their Facebook feeds, and one of the top five was um, tinted in in retro style photographs. Yeah, but that's what and like it's not about the photographs. It's about it has to be about the geocaching. It really I know, does. I know. But but like in the in the mobile experience. The, yeah, yeah. Because they they did it they did it absolutely the way it should be done. But do you do you see the whole Instagram um, audience currently like jumping ship because uh, they're gonna eventually change the terms of service and, yeah, and I was eventually for that, and it hasn't happened yet. Well, that that's that's gonna be the big. I think that's the, gonna be the day where where this all kind of this stuff hits the fan. Um, once this terms of service change and all of a sudden all your geocached information, all your location based information on your pictures are Facebook property, I think that's when people are gonna start jumping ship. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference because people generally don't care. You know, like yeah. if you can serve me a better ad, I'm not against it. I'm just saying like. You know, if you can serve me a better ad and I know my information is being used for a specific purpose, then I'm fine with that. I would rather. I don't want to waste my time looking yeah. at crap. Show me advertisements about TVs, t- cell phones. Uh, Remind me my favorite show is on tonight. I know, right? But, you know, if I'm a Nair ad, I mean, I'm Harry, but I don't need, I'm not going to buy Nair. Like, it's, I, yeah. show me stuff that makes sense to me. I'm totally for it. I just, uh, I, I could see people jumping ship because they're like, oh my gosh, I don't want Facebook to have my information. I'm so scared of everything. It already does. I know. <laughs> it does. But the thing is, the, the one thing I'm worried about is that, that Facebook is eventually going to absorb Instagram and Instagram will no longer exist in the form that we see it or exist I, well, at that, all outside of Facebook. That's going to happen. I know. And I just like having a place where I can just Send a silly picture, and my Twitter friends who have the same personality that I do, that not necessarily all my family friends on Facebook would necessarily understand, and we could just laugh about it, and that's the end of it. Um, but then once you, honestly, once it becomes part of Facebook, I will use it less because I don't put very many pictures on Facebook. You're gonna have to use my app, Instagram. I will use Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Instagram. I don't know if that's an app yet. I'm not endorsing it. Um, no. But I think we can move on to things we are endorsing. Do you have yes. a, Do you have plugs for this week at all? Do you have anything you want the internet to check out? 
I'm going to let you go first. Because okay. Because you always make me go first. Because you always have the best stuff. Well, no. I mean, this week. I <laughs> like today? <laughs> this week I will go first because I'm testing out something for you. For the, the people watching this right now. And you, oh. too. I guess you could no. listen. It's a site called ting.com. T I N g.com and it is a uh, fairly cool idea basically um you're it's a cell phone site it's a site that runs off of the sprint network it's a telecom and i hate that word cuz i just it makes me just cringe i don't like at and i've had bad experiences with um verizon i can get by t-mobile and sprint to sprint but um anyway ting.com here runs on the sprint network it's not owned by sprint it's its own company and basically they're a wholesaler of data they say you know these are our rates pick what you want we're not going to overcharge you it's like cell phones from people that uh like me you know like people that there was a wholesaler for data well that's what they do i mean i suppose there's a wholesaler for everything well, the, the Sprint Sprint sells their network to other companies, and Ting has bought the ability to use the uh, the Sprint network. But what's really cool, what's really cool about this is not the plans, not the devices, but um, just how they charge. It's it's just I I can't wait. It's a simple billing process. I'm gonna test it out, see if the the network is really up to par. Um, I only bought like a two hundred dollar phone because I don't know if this is a real alternative to giant yeah. phone companies. But I really like voting with my wallet, and I want to support a company that mm-hmm. is um, that is kind of like aligned and doesn't charge you weird things. Because you know when you go to to Sprint or T-Mobile or whoever, and you say, "Hey, you're like, oh, here's my eighty nine dollar bill," and you leave there and you pay your money, and then all of a sudden, you know, the next month the bill is like one hundred twenty dollars for no reason. I, I can't stand that. There's just all these weird service charges and things like that. Ting is the alternative to that, supposedly. So I'm going to test it out for you guys. I'll tell you how it is. Um, I bought a kind of a junky a, a Samsung Transform Ultra. It's being shipped to me this weekend. What was it? Transformer? It's a Samsung Transform Ultra. It's not, <laughs> it has nothing to do with Transformers. It has a slide-out keyboard because I'm I felt like getting a slide out keyboard. But anyway, um, if I like it, I'll go buy a really nice device. But uh, the thing is, I don't know if it's good or not. I will tell you in the upcoming weeks, give you the update. Um, you read it, yeah, I'm assuming. You've read reviews and all that junk. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I actually heard about it um, from a couple couple different people. And then it was on the, uh, the Twit network. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try it. And... Uh, <laughs> It's it's really not the billing is so much I, I I don't know yet but from what I hear the billing is like easy to understand it's like oh, okay you everything makes sense yeah everything just makes sense like okay not like register flamingo <laughs> servicing fee. yeah that that's the thing they don't charge there's a lot of extra fees that people will charge on bills um just as service fees for no reason and they name them dumb things and you're like what is this yeah patriot service or something you know like they make it sound like really important but um but ting is like the company that doesn't in fact just going if i if i get um 500 minutes because i'm not going to do like a whole bunch of minutes i'm going to do what what is it who talks on the phone i know right yeah nobody does that i'm gonna do 500 minutes one device i'll do a thousand text messages because caitlin's gonna message me a thousand times and then i'll do two gigs of data that's 62 bucks a month oh that's not bad no it's not and if i use less than that they credit your account nice like say i only use a gig of data my my bill will be 44 bucks it's crazy cool so um I don't know. Go check it out. Tell me what you think, and uh, I'll be your. T- I'll be the guinea pig here. <laughs> and, yeah, because uh, now now I'm curious. Is it as a Sprint network? So it's um, not but, SIM, correct? It is no, no. It's CDMA. So no, you can't use a SIM card on it, like AT and T or T Mobile. Um, See, that's why I went the the more expensive phone route uh-huh. to get the cheaper bill. See, so, but you but you're still getting hosed. How many text messages do you do a month? On limb. Well, I'm I do so, about ten thousand. Ten. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. How many minutes do you use? 
Uh, well, actually, I take that back because since I got an iPhone, most of my friends have uh, iPhones. So uh, iMessage to iMessage no longer counts as text message. Oh, cool. So it's I haven't like, really been looking at how many texts I've been sending, but we have unlimited family plan. Oh, okay. The family plans are like really cool. It's only six bucks a line, no matter what. You could up, oh. add up to 20 lines. I think it'd be really cool for a small business. Anyway, that's my plug for this week. It's not really a plug. It's more like, a, hey, check it out. Tell me what you think. And I'll tell you, I, I might actually have to upload a separate YouTube video and actually do kind of a, a review of the service and the device because I think that'd be really cool. I think it would too. I would definitely watch it. Um, my contract's up and... You know, oh, and that's the other thing. There's no well, long-term contract. You buy the device; it's your device outright, and you can just leave or get a different device whenever you want. Um, we'll 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 go over more of that. I don't. I've know. always wished that cell phone companies would do that. Like I could just walk into AT and T and be like, I would like to buy that iPhone for the full price. Yeah. And I would like to pay month to month. Yeah, no problem. It that no. Way. However, I can go and I can buy an iPad for the full price, and I can pay month to month for my data. Why can't I do it with my phone? I have no idea. It's because giant phone companies suck. Telecoms suck so much, and I really hope – Ting is from Canada. You know, what? what's Those wrong? Canadians. They're, they're so nice. Right? Yeah. I called their tech, their tech support, and I, I talked on their tech support line for a good 20, 30 minutes just putting this lady through her paces. Like, I already know – what I'm doing and about the phone. And I was just like, you know, she was, she was back and forth and it was, she wasn't reading a script either. She was a real person and we had a conversation and I went away feeling even better about my decision to go with this company after talking to the tech support. I'm, I've been thoroughly impressed. They even tweeted me back in all binary after I tweeted them. <laughs> and, and, what did you, what did you say to them? Well, I told them like, Hey Ting, uh, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to a uh, string in a, can i'm trusting you don't mess this up kind of thing and and uh they, they tweeted me back in all binary because that's like my twitter profile is a bunch of zeros and ones oh. and, and they 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 tweeted me back welcome to ting uh and i was just like so impressed i'm like these guys are gonna be I, i'm gonna fit right that's really awesome that they actually like took the time to like s normally companies just yeah. reply and whatever happens happens but they actually took the time to like Look, See they what you're about and who you are, and, and yeah, they they obviously looked at my profile because, huh. I mean, I was I was actually even more impressed after that. So they're starting off on a really high note for me, but I'll give you the whole meat and potatoes of it once I get my device. We'll see how the coverage is, Ooh. and uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, how so. Are you? Yeah. And I'm excited to text you. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. I'm supposed to get my phone this weekend. I'm gonna activate it this weekend, supposedly. So. Because I'm tired of twexting you. Twex yeah, yeah. Twexting sucks, especially because it's texting. <laughs> it's all public too, basically. You yeah. know, like th there's no security to a direct message in Twitter. Um, yeah. do, do you did you come up with a plug? You feel like I mean, you had that great plug last week with the library. I did. No, 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 I'm gonna still stick in my great plug from last week. Support your public libraries. I mean, I'll even throw in a support your local businesses because. Uh, kind of with your phone. Uh, the big corporations are, they own us. So why don't we go to the little guys? Vote with our wallets, as you say. I think that's the most important thing, though. Like, I, I'm a huge advocate of voting with your wallet. I only, and if there was another alternative other than Comcast, I'd probably switch because I've been burned by Comcast so many times. So if you guys know a good ISP in the Metro Detroit area that is not Comcast, uh, let me know because I just I I want to support companies that support me. You know, I don't want to support companies that are just in it for the money. Yeah, I, I want to feel special every time. <laughs> That was so precious. I would just want to feel special, you know? Everybody wants to feel special. I understand. I understand. I, I, I want that, too. And I want that for you. Anyway, make us feel special by emailing us. Um, you can email us at socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. That is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. And let us know what you think. Is Instagram worth a billion dollars? Do you think Ting is a good idea? Do you support your public library? <laughs> Let us know. It's uh, social media meltdown at justcoolenough.com. We absolutely appreciate your messages. Make sure you like the video. If you made it this far in, you minus a like us. Um, if not like me, like Caitlin. <laughs> and you can always follow us here on the Twitter. My Twitter address is twitter.com slash speedia40. Or you could just go at speedia40. 
Yes, yes. Or you could follow this girl over here, which her name is something Shelby at whatever. Uh, whatever. Excuse me. I'm Caitlin Shelby, and uh, I'm like one of the best people you'll find on Twitter. So much more interesting than Joe, at least. I, I, I would say so. Best, but I, I don't. I don't. Uh, you yeah. had to choose one or the other.